gonna be like, mm, so, mm. and sometimes you don't even know the person's name, but you're like, no, the sister that sits over there, where is she? Even the, the members, I don't know about none of y'all, but every single person, like, I, I'm so impacted by the presence of everyone, even if I don't talk to them. There are some of the members in my church that have been dead 10 years, and I think about them. Oh, Sister Rubicill, oh, Sister, and, and I was like, oh, and she used to sit over there. And we think, we live our life as if there is no purpose on it. But we have a purpose. And so, with all of that in mind, we're going to think about our destinies, right? Um, God is a designer. He designed you, remember that conversation, down to how you look. He chose you, your personality. We're going to explore that. That must mean that there is a specific purpose for you that only you can do. It's almost like, imagine a puzzle piece, right? Every single piece in that puzzle serves a purpose. And one piece in the puzzle can say, listen, I'm not coming today, you, you do the other, it's shaped different. So each and every one of us has a role that I promise you, I can't play your role, you can't play my role. You are here for a reason. Do you believe it or is it hard to believe? Amen. Glory to God. A specific purpose that only you can do. The Holy Spirit bumped me in the head and he said, emphasize this. Because a lot of people have been saying, oh, let such and such do it. God gave you an assignment and you said, let such and such do it. Such and such can do it better than me. You completely misunderstand. If he asks you to do it, it's because he wants you to do it. And if such and such did it, it wouldn't be the same. Let's all repent for that. Because we, in church, a lot of idolatry happens. Let's repent of that. Where we put up personalities and we say, oh, this person. Oh, let this person. And God is like, I know that person. I made that person, but you. Right? So that only you can do. So the question is, at this point, if you don't know the answer, it's okay. But if you do, write it down. Do you know? Have you discovered, has God spoken to your heart what he created you to do? Do you know? Do you have an idea? If you don't, if you do, if you have an idea, you might not have a clear destination, but you know, God wants to use me in that way. Go ahead and run it down. If you don't have an answer directly, it's okay. We're in a, we're in a journey, right? And remember I said when we were talking about traumas, that one of the things that we need to do is to sit with the Lord a little bit, a lot of it, and let him talk to us. And he's talking to us, but sometimes we're not sitting. But one of the ways that God talks to you about what you were created to do is in who he made you to be. We don't pay enough attention to ourselves. Why? Because, well, number one, because we think it's self-centered. I'm not, I'm not telling you to be self-centered. I'm telling you to be self-aware. It's different. Aware because you understand that you were created for a purpose and you want to discover it because the Bible says there is a time coming when no man can work. All right? So, huge part of knowing what you were created to do, think about who you are. Think about the talents that God has given you. Think about your personality. Did you know that God gave you a personality that is in line with your destiny? And a lot of us think our personalities are a mistake. Not, there's nothing worse than being gifted in the wrong place. Because people will see your giftedness as an anointing.
annoying because it's in the wrong place. So your gifts, your talents, your temperament, your personality, think about who you are. And when you start to see it, don't tell God no, but you can't use that. Because you are not the designer. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about gifts. I think we're going to start with talents first. But I want to I wanna remind you, I told you this already, about the story. Like when I was a teenager, I felt I had no talents. I felt I had no talents. Because I felt like talent was singing, dancing, arts, and I didn't have any talent. But I wasn't paying attention to who I was naturally, right? Naturally, the person who you're seeing right now, I let people see it or don't see it, but this is who I am. I am a teacher, like naturally. You know how you know you're a teacher naturally? How many of you like grew up in like the islands or somewhere, right? And like there are bushes and you out there teaching the bushes. And you all have a teacher bush. I you used to like the bush then. Because they're You out there teaching the bush. Yep. Some people, you know, that they're natural house makers, they're natural cooks, that they be making all kinds of pies, cakes. They just be, but we're not paying attention to these things because we assume, oh, cooking is not a talent. Yeah. Yeah. Some people can't do it. I don't know. Yeah. Who you? I put my hand down. Some people can't. I don't know. Don't worry about nothing. So, right? <laughs> but it's not a talent of mine. It's different. So you need to pay attention. Be intentional. What are the things that you do well without effort? Hmm. And you like it. It gives you energy. It doesn't suck your energy. Right, so let's talk about talents a little bit. So that's one thing you're going to focus on. What are your talents? What do you do well? So a definition of talent. Talents are natural aptitudes or skills. Natural aptitudes or skills. Can anyone do, um, share one of your talents if you know what one is? Who, who knows their talent? Go ahead and share with them. Interior design. Interior design. What's your name again? Huh? Nia. Yeah. Go ahead. Poetry. All right, we got some poets in the room. Okay, okay. Anyone else? Do, did you hear her talent? Hold on. Back in the day, people didn't know that was a talent. It's a talent. She likes to make people laugh. Oh, yeah. Listen, that's a talent. Now people get paid a lot of money for that. Yeah. Yeah. And back in the day, they said you were the, the class clown, right? Yeah. You know? So, um, different talents. Anyone else wants to share? If you know or you don't want to share, just write what you think, what you know your talents to be. Yes. Organize. No, but Pastor, you said it with a face like, but it's a thing. No, but for real though. You wouldn't think of that as a traditional so talent. Yes. Oh my but God. Yeah. She's so now, now you can have a whole company where you, you just did. go into people's Adara houses and organize. And God oh, gave that to you naturally. Yeah. And we were like, oh, but I don't know how to. I wasn't created to do anything. You were created to bring order to the world. You were created to bring joy. Yeah. And, and, and millicents, right? So you organize and millicent decorate. You know? Listen, not to be talents. Pay attention to what there is not a human being that came into this earth and God didn't give them something. At least he one. gave them at, listen. He said, and he gave us one. more than just talent. Well you got at least one. You have something. You, my one talent. you just mm -hmm. you just don't disregard what it is that you can do. Poetry? I have a question. Yes. Okay, we're about to talk about gifts now. We're going to talk about gifts right after. So, so talents are one thing. So you're going to pay attention to that, right? Write them down. The next thing are spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts. And I just realized that this, based on the scriptures that we are looking at, it's not an exhaustive list of every gift that the Spirit gives. These are just the, what the, the Bible has said. 
our gifts that the Spirit gives. But one of the most powerful spiritual gifts is that of worship. I didn't say singing. Singing is a talent. But the gift to be a worshiper in the house, it has to be a spiritual gift or it is empty. It annoys me. Lord Jesus, it annoys me to hear people who sing well and have nothing in their belly. Lord Jesus, let me preach for two minutes and I'm going to be done. A worshiper is a wind instrument. It is a shofar. It is that thing that God sends that shofar out to let the enemy know. Notice that the shofar always blows and then the soldiers come after it. I, I, it annoys me when worshipers don't know who they are. Worshippers are wind instruments. They're weapons of warfare. They have to have power in their belly that when they blow, there is a shift. When the, when, when the worshipers worship, the warriors just come in like, we just good because it's already done. When the, when the worshipers don't worship, like when they, when they don't shift the atmosphere. Lord, especially if you are preaching, Jesus, how? Hi, hi, hi. Well, I don't like to go into any place where I came into a place and preach, and I said, um, I said to somebody, that, um, did anybody worship? You could tell, no worship in the atmosphere. But when a true worshiper goes and, and they shift, and then the intercessors intercede, oh Jesus, holy victory. Vic oh, Lord, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. We'll preach at another time. Oh, Jesus. Oh. I open my mouth 
and I close it back because I need to use wisdom. But there are people out here trying to charge people for money to go to the school of the prophets where they're going to teach them how to prophesy. How are you going to give that person that gift? Good money, you know. I heard it's good money. I don't pay anything. You can't. Honey, you can't. Honey, God gives that. Yes, yes, ma'am. Um, so, my question is, your spiritual gift, can you have that gift before you become a Christian? No. Yes. You don't think You have so? a talent. And wait here's the thing. Hold on. You because have, hold on, wait a second. Be patient for a second. Mm -hmm. You have a talent or a natural aptitude. Okay. When God gives you that spiritual gift, he can, because he's the designer, use something that he's already given you. For example, my talent, one of them, is to talk. Talent is to talk. It is not a spiritual gift. God used my spiritual gift is to preach and teach. God, but I couldn't get that by practice. The ability to preach, because preaching is not just talking loud. It is, that's a different sermon. Because preachers are wind instruments. When I when I speak, you can tell I know that I'm doing. I shift the atmosphere. I send out the word. That's why when I'm done preaching, I'm done. Because I pull power from my belly and I begin. It is a spiritual work. You can't get that by talent. You can talk by talent. And you could sound like a preacher. But you have no authority over the atmosphere and the lives and the minds of the people without the anointing. Woo. So God can use a, a, a talent, mm -mm -mm. right, and put that spiritual gift on top of it. But it's not the same. You get yeah. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so there are people who who do not have the Holy Spirit, who are not Christians, not child of God, fully talented, and their talent looks like looks similar to a spiritual gift. This is where you need a, a gift called discernment. Especially with the preachers. You must discern. Yes, my girl. You know what? There's a scripture in Romans that says that his callings and his gifts are without repentance. A lot of people don't understand that scripture. She asked the question, can God take away your spiritual gift? No, he's not gonna. He can, but he's not gonna. He says his callings and his gifts are without repentance. But that, people don't understand. That is no license. Because your gifts don't take you to heaven. Your fruit does. Amen to that. So he will allow you to be gifted and go to hell. He, because a lot of preachers like Samson, Lord Jesus, that's a whole lot of message. A lot of preachers, he puts that spiritual gift on top of them and they have power. And they, they, they chase some Delilah spirit. And he removes the anointing, but they still look the same. They still preach the same. And you don't know the difference, but I promise you there is no power in it. And he will let them do that and go all the way to hell. I heard a preacher say, God is the only person who will fire you and keep you in the position. <laughs> you know? What is true spiritual power? That's a good. <laughs> Y'all don't want my answer. True, Pastor, what is true spiritual power? Lord Jesus. Hmm? Me and the Pentecostal church. Lord Jesus. Jesus. Because one of the issues with some of us is that we want power. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, I, I don't know if you've ever heard me preach, Matthew 5. It's one of the temptations you're going to face, right? The problem is power belongs to God. Amen. Hey, I promise you, mm -hmm. people get upset. They're like, no, but I have power. No, no power, power belongs no. to God. The only thing that we can do as human beings are be connected to the vine. He said, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, when we are connected to the vine, we can be conduits of his power. But we have no power. None. I'm, all, my, 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 I'm telling you. My, my, we were talking about that last night. We have no power. If we try to manifest our own power or act like we have mm -hmm. power or 
work of power. I'm going to tell y'all, y'all become witches and warlocks in the house of God. Amen. Witch magic and witchcraft is power cut off from God. There are other spirits that give power. So, power belongs to God. We can be conduits. But we don't have it. We don't control it. It is all God. Last example, and I'm going to let Pastor Pastor's belly to full. The example, everything that Jesus did, we on a tangent. I'm using up my, my half an hour. Everything that Jesus did on earth, pay attention when you're reading the gospel. He did everything as an example to you. Half of the stuff that he did, he didn't have to do as God on earth. He did it so that you would understand who you are and how to live on earth. Good. So his friend Lazarus is dead. All right? Mm -hmm. You know the whole story. He takes forever to get there. Mm -hmm. He wants to make sure Lazarus is dead. Then he walks over, right, the resurrection and the life, and he cries first. We could preach a whole. Like, why are you crying, Jesus? You're about to raise the man. Mm -hmm. but, but he's showing us that grief. It's, it's okay. It has its place. Mm -hmm. Good. That's not the point. Then he says, take me to where you laid him. Mm -hmm. And they took him. Then Jesus, who has the power to raise Lazarus, starts to pray in a loud voice. Oh, God, I pray so that these people will know yes, that you done. have. Exactly. That yeah. you have. Yeah, that's it. I feel the Holy Ghost. That's it. That's that it. you have power. Yeah. Yeah. Why did he do that? He is God incarnate. He wants us to know, listen. He has power. Pray. Listen. I said there's a spirit of witchcraft in the church. Different Go ahead. Go ahead. Pray the Lord. And let him answer. Amen. I'm gonna let Pastor because I feel something right there. I would just want to see. Go ahead. Yes. We tend to believe that because we see somebody in operating in those gifts, mm -hmm. that means surely that's power. What? But we want to not be told because discernment is everything. Mm -hmm. And you're so right. We have Mm -hmm. Right? You, you can try to. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. But if we don't understand that true power is us changing yes. back into the image and likeness of God, we're going to always be true. True word. You understand what I'm saying? Y'all understand what I'm yes. saying? Yes. I can speak in tongues all I want to. I can prophesy all I want to. All you those change. things. Those are spiritual giftings. But it does not mean that God is with you. True. Yes. True. When you know God is with you, you are convicted. Yes. You, you walk a convicted life. My God. You understand? That's how you know that you with the power, the power is the Holy Spirit. But we like to separate it and make it seem mm -hmm. like, oh, it's me laying hands. No. It's me, it's me mm -hmm. opening my mouth and you fall mm -hmm. out. That is not it. Mm -hmm. That's a small part of it. Yep. But when the yep. word reaches your heart and your heart begins to leap like, no, I can't lie. Yes. I can't, I can't That's tell power. you this and this. Yeah. You understand? I can't cuss and come in church and act like I ain't cut. You understand? Mm -hmm. That's the true power. That's, power. Yeah. That's why, yeah. you know, the, when the Bible says that the book can't contain all the things. Oh. Mm -hmm. And it has yeah. nothing to do with the laying out and all. It was his teaching. And he tried to get us to understand. Yeah. Yeah. And in the same Matthew 5 at the end of the chapter, it says, you know, and when he opened up his mouth to teach, mm -hmm. he taught as one in a story. Mm -hmm. So much right. that the people were like, nah, he's teaching it because he lives it. Yes. When you live word. it, it comes with that word, word. word. Because you're living a convicted life. Yes. You understand? Yes. Yes. And I'll show you how much it's real. You ever listen to uh, uh, you know, a motivational speaker or whatever, and they're, they're, they're speaking from their experience or whatever. It is coming with a, a force of power. Yes. Why? Because they live it. Yes. They understand it. It's like a financial uh, uh, mm -hmm. threat. They know, you know, some of them know the struggle, you know, and so they can teach you. They have dedicated their time to say, I'm not going to live like this. Yes. And I need everyone to know this information. It comes with a certain power because yes. what? They live it. Yes. They live it. That's so it. That power yes. is not what we think. Like no, said, help it, really it really isn't. It really isn't. And I, I always I always tell people this this part, and I'm with you with it, Pastor, because I say, you know why we need the anointing? 
Like we'd be like, oh, I need the anointing. And we think it's for the demonstration. You know what we need the most anointing for? To live the Christian life. Honey, to keep your body under subjection takes all the anointing in your body. Sure do. Mm -hmm. Hey. To the point where you can't even lay hands because you're like, I'm, I'm taking everything just to hold Joni and be like, sit down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't say yes, they walk in this and and Jody, I'm like, but mm -hmm. <laughs> listen, I was telling my daughter last night, I'm like, we need so much discernment that we don't only discern other people. We're coming to the game. We have so much discernment that we discern our own heart. Mm -hmm. Like you see your own heart coming. You rebuke yourself. You like, shut up and sit down. Yes, Lord. Honey, you, because it's a different level of discernment. It's, well, you could discern people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you can discern yourself. I'm going to tell you what happened to me yesterday. We all over the place. I'm coming. We're going to go in a straight line and I'm not going to go over time. Yesterday, God showed me something. I went home. And God says to me, Jonian, you have been in a spiritual battle all day and you don't know. He said, you're so oblivious. And I'm like, really? I was? He's like, look. And I, I, I'm like, oh, the whole morning I woke up, a piece of anxiety that from my head popped. I had to say it in my And I was like, this is me, this is me. I'm breathing, I'm lighting candles, I'm, I'm doing all kind of stuff. And God is like, you did everything concerning those feelings except pray. Because you felt like it was natural. You felt like it was natural and it was spiritual. He says you are so oblivious. So then I'm like, God, really? I'm like, so I start to connect to him now, right? And then I'm, I'm praying about it. I'm like, that is so interesting because the adversary does that to distract us. Here's how you discern your own heart now. So I'm there talking to God. And I look over and see my spirit. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Because there are some demons that think that they have access to your spirit. Because you've always been listening to them ever since you were a child. So they think that you and them are friends. And I realize, I'm like, oh, anxiety. So you think, oh my God, see you. And I begin to wrap up my own spirit. Because I'm like, why have you been given room to this thing? You have to discern your yes, own your self, own or else we deceive ourselves preaching others and we left yeah, out. And I have out. no time for that. <laughs> Y'all figure it out. <laughs> so anyhow, so gifts. Let's talk about some of them. I'm running out of time. So spiritual gifts, and there are more that are in the text. But the text that we're going to read is Ephesians 4, 11, and 12. Romans 12, 6 to 8. And then we're going to go through 1 Corinthians 12, 28 for the list. And so Ephesians 4, the verse before says, um, the same one that ascended, descended, and brought with him gifts. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for building up the body of Christ. You're coming to teach? Having gifts that defer according to the grace. Look, listen to this one. Having gifts that defer according to the grace. Let us use them in prophecy, in proportion to your faith, in service, in your ministry, to those who teach in his teaching, to the one who exhorts in his exhortation, to the one who contributes, who knew that was a spiritual gift? To the one who contributes in generosity, to the one who leads with zeal, to the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. So let's, let us look really quickly at these gifts. And what I want you to do is if you feel the Lord has instructed you you have seen where the Lord is leading you in that way. I want you to just check it. Now, this checking don't mean nothing. It's the Holy Spirit that's going to check it. He's going to ultimately check it. 
the other thing that I want to say is some people or most people don't have just one talent. Most people just you can have several. Alright? So the first one in first Corinthians 12, 18, administration. This person is an organizer, a director, plans, leads. Who thinks that they have this gift? I'll, listen, those of you who God has given vision to lead, you don't want to know who has the gift of administration. You can't do nothing without this gift. Thing. So let me see the hands. I'm telling you, I'm being selfish. Who has this gift? Thing? The gift of apostleship. This gift is not to be confused. Pay attention to this one. The gift of apostleship is not to be confused with the office of apostle. The gift of apostle is not the office of apostle. Same thing with prophet. Those with the spiritual gift of apostleship often start new ministries. They go into places where people have not heard about Jesus. They communicate across cultures to establish churches. In challenging environments, they develop people. And so this person's a pioneer. Anybody feels like, yeah, I feel like God, he called you out upon the wall. <laughs> the one that we were talking about before, God Jesus, we're going to spend some time on this one. Discern men, mighty God. Discern men. I'm going to say this before I talk about the gift. In the body of Christ, because the people of God have the spirit of God. Pay attention. And the spirit of God is the spirit of prophecy. Apart from having this particular gift, the church can discern. Do you understand what I just said? So the fact that you are in the church and you discern a thing, it doesn't mean that you have discernment as a gift. All right, so let me say it again. Every person who is in the kingdom has the spirit of God. The Spirit of God gives you information that goes beyond the natural world, yeah? And so because the Spirit of God is in the church, you are the church, and you're all together, something can happen in the sanctuary, and the church can discern it, or a sister can discern it, or a brother can discern it, and it does not mean that that person has the gift of discernment. We gotta be careful. Because sometimes what we do is every time we see a manifestation, we call that an office and it's dangerous. Because a person might manifest, but they don't have the office. The problem with putting people in offices that they are not called to is that the devil don't care about what they call you. They care about what you can do. They care about your authority. Here the problem now. Because you have the unmitigated goal to be called an apostle. The adversaries are gonna deal with you on apostle level. Yeah. Mm. Sure. Because you have the unmitigated call to be called a prophet, they're gonna deal with you on prophetic level. But if you are a prophet without eyes, you are out for the count. Cause they're like, you're supposed to see us because you said you could see. Not because the discernment is in the church. You get what I'm saying? The church can just, and it should discern. But there are some people who God gives the gift of discernment. And so this person will know with confidence. This is not a if and but. This is not a one time. This is a thing that you operate in. Where you're able to with confidence discern behaviors, teaching. The Bible calls this gift, um, Pastor was reminding me, discerning of spirits. Because I, I wish we had all the time in the world to just teach and learn and just communicate and we all talk. You know that the Holy Spirit is not the only speaking spirit? Mm -hmm. All spirits have a voice. And they want to be heard. And there are some times that there are spirits that speak and they say good things. And they are not of God. Listen. One example I'm going to draw. The only 
only way you can know that that spirit is not of God is by discernment. Because the spirit can look good, the person can look good, what they say sound good, is right, and God didn't send them. Look at this example. The young lady that had the spirit of Python. Listen to what homegirl said for three days following the apostles. These men are servants of the Lord Jesus that are sent to show you the way of salvation. What she said that was wrong. If we heard that spirit, we say to God be all the glory. Hallelujah. God bless you, sister. Yes, God is speaking through you. And the, the, the funny part about the apostles, I think they're hilarious. Because they like this. We just want this lady to leave us alone. Three days, they don't said nothing. On the third day, you're like, you know what? Enough of this. Enough of you. <laughs> yeah, discern, discerning of spirits, not discerning of what people could do. Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to tell you something. The Bible says this is the only way we're going to know what's of God. I need more time. Try the spirit by what? By the spirit. By the spirit. There's another script that says that my spirit, I don't have to ask who she is. I really don't. I don't have to ask who you are. I don't, because I look and, I, and my spirit bears witness with your spirit. I'm like, mm -hmm. we have a full conversation. We move on. That you are the son of God. And sometimes your spirit is saying, well, there's a situation happening. Something all right. <laughs> but you, but some no, but you can't try the spirit by your eye. No, you can't try the spirit by how like if you like the person or not. Yes. it has to be that the spirit of God tries the spirit. You know, anyhow. So discernment is a needed gift. Who thinks that they have this gift? Discernment. Yes, discernment, discernment. I have th th this gift. Be messing with my life because I sure get way does. too much information sometimes. Sure does. I go into a, a church, an atmosphere, I'm like, people like Jody and it's crazy. I'm like, y'all don't know what I'm going through. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's the word. You got to filter it. You got to filter it. I'm, I'm done. I had a lady, and she was telling me about, she was seeing a woman, and Them, no. You're the dream I didn't know. 
You know what I dream last night? I mean, you know that? Sister, Sister Maxine, dead enough? Yeah. She dead, Lord God. Mm. So then my response is, what did you do? <laughs> and the next move is... Because the fact that God showed you Sister Maxine dead, he's telling you, go into the spirit realm and attack. Yeah. 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 Listen, the moment you get up out of your dream, no, you jump into spiritual navy seal mode oh and you begin to tear down trample and paradise with the maxima sleep and I made a no no why. Oh my god. Yeah. Why? I, no, I can't take the lazy dream. Thank I'm you. sorry. Yes. Yes. Repent. Yes. Yes. Yes, yeah, that there what? Yes. Repent. But you can't yeah. have this. What you want yes. to do for? Do Listen, I, I, I want to tell everybody. She said she. Um, Sister Sandra is saying this is happening so much in the church. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. And the thing is, the Bible says, "The servant that knoweth the master's will oh, and doeth not. not shall be beaten." Then he strikes. And, and no, the difference between them and you is because no, I taught you. Yes. Yeah. They might have the excuse that they don't know. Yes. If you have a sight gift, you also have an intercessory gift. God don't just talk people business. You know, some of us that have that gift where we see people, Lord Jesus, my friend, no, we be seeing some stuff like Jesus. We done saw it. Why God showed you the person's business? Because he, God, God is not a gossiper. No, way to pray. God is not a gossiper. And if you, that's the other thing. You see, if you're a gossiper and God has given you that gift to discern and he sees that you don't have the character to maintain the gift, he will not going to take it away when you turn, turn it off. Turn it off, yep. That's true. Because he didn't show you people business to talk about it. He showed you to send him. So you see, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. So you see the sister up on top of the situation. Yeah. Mighty God. God showed you the situation. And you think you want to gossip? Why did he show it to you? Because the sister need help. She cannot tell you off of the situation by ourselves. So you go into the, I just said, come from off, off yes, the situation. Tomorrow you see her, you just go, Yes, that's it. Kaya said she came out. That's it. That situation. Yes. And it is finished. Amen. In the spirit, we don't want no grudge because all of us are sinners. Yes. 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 We just help you and keep it moving. That's it. Because tomorrow you have to go help me and keep it moving. Yes. 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 Lord Jesus, discernment. That's good. Discernment. That's good. Discernment. That's good. No, that's a gift. A lot of us are sick. That's good. And a lot of people in church. You know what that? What a selfishness. You know what that? God did show me. Yes. Yes. You know what I'm You know what I'm So God did just show you because why? Because you're special. My God. Mm -hmm. Because you want it so. And show you for help. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you can help and not judge. Yeah. Taking yeah. heed unto yourself. Yeah. Help and not judge. Mm -hmm. Listen, discernment is needed. Because I'm, I'm good discernment too, and I'm coming down. Good yeah. discernment. When you're discerning, you must discern what you are discerning. Yeah. We, we need one whole Jesus. thing and discernment. Yes. When you are discerning, mm -hmm. you must discern what you are discerning. Mm -hmm. Listen to what I say. There are some baby Christians, right? You, we grow in this thing, all right? So when the gift first that manifests now, right? You sense a demon. You sense a demon. Nobody not teach you the spiritual discipline to calm your spirit and look and see what you are seeing. So now you open your mouth in the congregation and say, Pastor, I have a demon. Really? <laughs> sister, that sister, they have a demon. Really? And I've seen it happen. And God showed me, said, look, Jody and learn. He said, listen, you must discern what you are discerning. Because the fact that we feel a demonic presence right here, so it don't mean that Sister Sandra have a demon. Amen. We must discern what we are discerning. Yes. And be precise in yes. the spirit. Yes. 
so as to not injure the body. Yes. We not injure the church people. Eh? Yes. Because even if there is a situation, Matthew, so we need a full teaching. That's good. Yes. Because That's even if there's a situation right here, so with your sister, you can fix it and she don't. Know. That's good. And she not harmed, you know? Yes. She just helped. She just helped. And a situation right here, so and I'm over this side and we just tear it. Yes, and I'm over this side, we are fixing. Come on, yes. that's good. But the Holy Spirit is not scandalous. Da, da, da. I don't I think just so. Help him yes. We must discern what we're discerning, yes. be precise. Yes. As it said, that when we are sick, what's really going on? Yes. I saw a situation with a young lady, I sat in my church with my own eyes, and the Holy Spirit said, oh, Watch and pay attention to what is happening. Yes. So I sit down and learn. The poor little girl, she was depressed. You see, depression yeah. it, it attracts demons. Yes, my mm -hmm. I want you to listen to what happened to this poor girl. How she was hurt in the church. Yes. Depression attracts demons. A lot of time when you're sitting in a depressive state, yes. things can attach to you. Mm -hmm. And that's why church is a good place. Mm -hmm. Because when you're coming, we're about to cut it off. That's All right, right. good. So this yeah. young lady actually was going through so and she came in with that entity. Yeah. So you see everybody now doing ah, <laughs> and you know who are church just you know there's something real now. Mm -hmm. What is great that you're there just watch. That's you know? it. Uh. And the people then start to run up and down. Some man don't know me at that one. Mm -hmm. Start to run up and down and start to rebuke the man of the people when pick me when they pick me not up no thing. Yes. Chief, I'm I'm a play the start demon. to rebuke mm. demon out of the child. We are, if we were precise people. in the spirit, would have recognized mm. that we must just yes. cut it off and move on and don't damage the people and children. Yes. Why don't wait later? <laughs> if me possess the demon, I you to come back later. I'm not going back. But you must make it back. The girl in so one of the Facebook from Canada. So I'm saying to her, open your mouth right now and declare that Jesus is Lord. Amen. No demon, I'm telling you, can. And if they're possessing you, your mouth will never be able to open. What you are dealing with with Christian people sometimes, it is an oppression. Yeah. It is an attack. Amen. But don't, you have to cast out what That's is not here. Like Come on. We must discern what we Come are Come on, truth. So those of us that have that gift, listen, I'm, I'm old, I mean, Abigail's time, those of us that have that gift, we're going to learn. It's like anything. We're going to learn how to use it so that we are effective and that we actually, because it's warfare time. And can you imagine if we were in actually actual military situation, real war? No, because nothing's going to because a church in. But suppose it was real war, and the navy seal them the dream of them. Oh, them decide to listen. Them see the thing, but them not do nothing about it. They can't bother flying and over here and going and. And all the people who are supposed to see and strategize the enemy, then say, listen. And they cannot see. The people who are supposed to see and say the enemy coming from the left, them cannot. You know, some murder. 
I've been saying it for months, the kingdom suffers violence because the people who are supposed to see not seen, who are supposed to sing not singing, Jesus, Lord of mercy, who are supposed to hear not hearing, because hear me wrapping up now, because they didn't know that they were here for us. They didn't know. They have identity issues. They have persona issues. Idols. And they think that they just in the church for one binge. Mm -hmm. It is best, Lord Jesus. Sometimes it's hard to scrap, you know. It's all right. We can't get for all. But you know, when you're old. You can get away with it, sister. You can get away with it. Yes. Mm. <laughs> come out in the socks and slippers. I hear that man in the church. I hear that. Man, I read it. I mean, that was, that was sister young man. <laughs> Sister, your mom used sure. to do that. Oh, the Muslim. All of this. Can you imagine? Look how much work the adversary got through. They keep your mom. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you injure you when you're a child, true, true. you make you don't know yourself, don't like yourself. Make you stop believing. You make you have a problem with who God made you to be, you have a problem with your femininity. Yeah. Then you sit down and tell yourself, listen, sit down and I don't want to bench till you're dead. You know, so that's what he. Listen, the Christian, is it Christian? We're going to what he can do to you is keep you ineffective until you die. So that the kingdom suffers violence. The stuff will happen to you, I'm telling you. Believe me in the spirit. Pick me up and know me and put me in the spirit. No, say when me talk, know me and move before me talk. Yes. Good. You see, the things that the adversary has been doing in your life. You don't realize that the trouble are getting more trouble. Yes. Hey, about the king. You don't realize that you mm -hmm. yes. more pump plenty. Yes. Yes. Oh, more pump plenty, yes. man. Because yes. mm -hmm. yes. the man said, guess what? You get too close. Yes. Yes. Look at more destruction. Yes. Any minute, no shaggle see. Yes. Any minute, no shaggle yes. understand. Yes. More yes. trouble, yes. trouble, yes. trouble, 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 trouble. Yes. Discouragement. Yes. You don't realize that one woman in your life? You don't realize that depression just choose a convenient time to depress you. When you're about to get the victory, you don't realize you yes. must look into it. Jesus. You, wanna, you must discern times and seasons. Amen. Amen. All of a sudden, yes. everywhere you turn is trouble. Come on. Hey, hey. Right. Hey, hey, no peace for you. Go ahead. Catch me in the spirit. I break through time. I'm not being bred through for money. Yeah. Hey, we're yeah. not them traffic there. True. Yeah. We're not being bred through yeah. to victory, to yeah. authority, yeah. to power, yeah. to movement. Yeah. 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 Speak all the balls. Yeah. Speak all the balls. Yeah. You say this is because we become kingdom agents. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. I mean, the right now is kingdom atmosphere. Go ahead. Yeah. When we speak it, it must go. Yeah. Come on, speak yeah. it. Yeah. Like all the balls. Yeah. Speak all the balls. Yeah, yeah. 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 Suffer for this. Oh, you know, them are trying to distract you. Come on. Use your suffering to gain power, man. I suffer for this. Come on. Say, Come on. Say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, as long as you make him distract you with suffering, he not talk to you. Show him, say, listen, see more of me suffer, he's stronger, I'm again. Yeah. If you come by sea, you learn how to swim. If you come by land, you learn how to run. If you come by ear, you learn how to fly. Overcome, he overcame. Amen. So take a 
up your cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love the fact that we're women. We can. We come for one another. We understand and we grow. Oh, had a baba yes. We begin to say that of Zion had a baba yes. The kingdom yes. suffers violence had a baba yes. The adversary is coming had a baba yes. yes. I'm holding you off for a second, but I need you. Yes. All right, okay, healing and deliverance. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Jesus. I want you to catch me and be changed. Be transformed. Yeah. Yeah. It is not the preached word that transforms you. Right. Your agreement. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Come on. Yes. I'm gonna tell you something. Yes. I did what God told me to do. I did it. Harababa seke. I have a million excuses of why I couldn't do this institute. But I did what he told me to do. I gave you what he told me to give you. Now it's your turn. Bring my, my, my only begotten from the door. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.